contrite heart Humbly I surrender all that I am I want to learn from you Please draw me close to you Help me share your love and grace in all I do Lord, I come before you with contrite heart Humbly I surrender all that I am I want to learn from you Please draw me close to you Help me share your love and grace in all I do Shine a light to a darkened world And always live the truth in every way May your love for me be seen by everyone And lead others to trust and love you more episode of Youth Live Unplugged. We are happy that you decided to join us this evening. We are having a very interesting topic here this evening. The topic is what is 
what is it in thy hand you know and we will dig deep into this topic this evening and we are really happy that you decided to join us we actually missed you last week you know because sometimes the program takes so long to come but we are happy that you are viewing what we want to do we want to encourage you to tell your friends tell your family share the page like it you know share it in your whatsapp group share the link so many people can join us here um Join us here on the, the Youth Live Unplugged so we can have a wonderful time here this evening. We have a lot in store for you. So we're encouraging you, don't go anywhere, but just invite friends and families so they can be a part of what will be transpired here this evening. Right, so at this point, I will just introduce to you, make the panelists introduce themselves. And as they do that, they will tell us a little about the, the Sabbath and what they anticipate most about the Sabbath. So we'll start to my extreme right. You'll tell us your name and where you're coming from and you'll tell us what you look forward to on the Sabbath. Well, my name is Shima Hamlet. I'm from the Samaritan Seventh-day Adventist Church. I, what I like about the Sabbath... Yes, Shima. Tell us what you, you look forward to. Is the rest. The physical and the mental rest. Okay, good. All right, the next the young lady sitting next to you, the only rose um, among the, the guys here tonight. Hi, I'm Keisha Bertrand, and I'm from Byland Seventh-day Adventist Church. Okay. What I like about the Sabbath, as Kema said, the physical rest. I look forward to it when I can just rest and relax, no pressure, no rush, and even just enjoy sweet fellowship with my family. Okay, Praise God. good. All right. And the next person sitting next to your left, closer to my right. Hi. My name is Aika Shaku Hamlet. I'm from the Rosedale SDA Church. What I look forward to when it's Sabbath, I look forward to spending time with the family. I look forward to just ref reflecting on the week and thanking God for his goodness. Looking forward to spend time with the brethren at church. Okay, thank you, Brother Aika Shaku. Right, so sitting right next to me on my immediate right, tell us your name and where you're coming from and what you look forward to most on the Sabbath. My name is Dan Lee Noel. I'm from the Mount Fan Seventh-day Adventist Church. Um, I look forward to, you know, the rest that God prescribed on the Sabbath in that you meet and fellowship with the brethren, you know, who you missed for the past week. And uh, also meeting with your family, you know, to share God's love. That is what I look forward to on the Sabbath. All right, good. So we, these are our panelists for this evening. All right, so let me give you a little idea. This evening, the, the program is promising to be very interesting. Um, to, we'll dig deep into the path to, tell, to let you know how important it is that we all get involved in ministry. So we'll define ministry, um, how can you get involved, and all those different nice things that we'll be talking about this evening. But before we get into that, you know, we want to pray so God's Spirit will direct us in everything that we will be doing here this evening. All right, so we ask Sister Kisha, pray for us, please. Heavenly Father, we praise you, we glorify your name, we thank you for your Sabbath day of rest and gladness. We pray, Lord, that you'll forgive us. And as we're about to proclaim your name and share with the waiting audience there, Jesus, may your Holy Spirit lead and direct us. And as we share, help someone out there to be touched. Take control of this evening's Youth Life program and direct us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, so before we start singing, we just want to just look at a few comments from those who are online who said in their greetings. All right, and um, let us see what is going on there. All right, so Brother Shima, will re you'll tell us what is happening there online. So from Rosalind, what Rosalind is saying? Happy Sabbath, everyone. All right. Happy Sabbath you, Rosalind. Okay, good. We have a next one. Francesca says, Happy Sabbath, everyone. Blessings. All right, and Alan Charles George is saying, what are you saying, Brother Ika Shaku? Pleasant Sabbath to everyone. All Pleasant right. Sabbath to you as well. All right, good. And we have Krista Bain saying happy Sabbath. Kathy Kumbaba saying happy Sabbath. And she's viewing from St. Vincent and the Grenadines in the house. Yeah. Happy Sabbath to you too. All right. And then we have Francis Hamlet saying good evening, happy Sabbath. And requesting his hymn already. Yeah. All right. And Spice Lady, Brother Danley saying what? Happy Sabbath, you'd like family. And she's requesting a song as well. All right. Hymn 486. So all, all, all the song requests are coming. All the hymns are, are coming in. What we will do now, we will go and we will sing and bring praise and honor to God. So we will now go um, and start to praise the Lord as we turn to hymn number 632 by Francis Hamlet. All right, and we have our musician there, Brother Hamish. He's always there. He's always there, Hamish, to be always there to join us and to accompany us with the music as we praise the Lord. All right, so hymn number 632. Thank you. 
Until then. My heart can sing. What's on our next request and by whom? It's by Spice Lady Brave Boy and it's 486. 486. All right, 486. Let us continue to praise the Lord this evening. And don't forget to share the page with your friends and family so they can join us. I do believe. So we'll sing the first and we'll sing the last stanza. I do believe. set us free from our sins and he's Jesus all right there are many people who trust in different people and different deities as they claim but the only one who can set us free and the Bible says once the son of man set us free is free indeed mm -hmm. his name is Jesus Amen. Amen. all right so brother I can show you will tell us what is the next request on the spice lady next request is coming from sister Lana Charles George all right him oh. number 468 Theme right. 468, A Child of the King. 468. We'll sing the first verse and we'll sing the last verse. A Child of the King. Oh 
continue to praise the Lord. Let us get some feedback from them so we can we can interact with them. We know it's important that we, we keep them in mind because they are part of what is happening here. Alright, Rikisha, Rikisha is saying, you all could sing. Alright, praise the Lord. I never I never believe that. Sometimes you know you only <laughs> sing in the shower. But thank God, you know, someone, most of us, sometimes we are just congregational singers, but she said we can sing. Alright, then we have uh, Shalina, she joined, Nisha joined, and Rhonda Conwell is saying, Happy Sabbath family. Happy okay. Sabbath. All right. And Rosaline Jeffer McCoy is saying, Happy Sabbath, sis. Okay, so we have plenty of greetings coming. Hey, hey. Sister Dennis George, Danny, what she is saying? Hi, good night to everyone and happy Sabbath. She's requesting a hymn as well, hymn yeah. 321. All right, when we get to that, we will, we will sing that. Reva Benjamin is saying, what he is saying? Brother Ike. Mm -hmm. And Brother Shima Hamlet, good night. All right. That is your people, man. Yes, yes. All right, good. good. Night. All right, and Chomin Diary is saying, Happy Sabbath, Pastor. Happy Sabbath to you. All right. Actually, I didn't introduce myself, you know. I know you like that. <laughs> <laughs> I introduced everyone. I didn't introduce myself, all right? My name is Pastor Lambert Paul. I'm the pastor of the Western One District, all right? So we will continue to sing and praise the Lord. All right, and Brother Ike, you will tell us what is the, the next hymn. The next hymn is... From Sister Ross, Rosalind Jeffers McCoy. Mm -hmm. Hymn number 183. All right. 183. I will sing of Jesus' love. Amen. All right. love you know love. many times people sing around carnival time and they sing all kind of secular music and different things but the greatest song to sing is of jesus Amen. and him crucified Amen. Amen. all right so brother Danley, you tell us the next request and by who the next request is coming from sister dennis george and francisca it's hymn number 321 all right hymn number three two one jesus all right. Yeah. 
Jesus. Let's see what our online viewers are saying to us tonight. You know, let's interact with them, take their greetings and so on. All right. Brother Shima, you, what is um, Sister Yvette saying to us? Happy Sabbath family. All right. Go down, go down. Next one. Janice Philip. Hey, what she saying? Thank you. Kindly be my beloved sister. All right. Let's go down. Let's go down. Shadina Scott. Shadina Scott. Shadina Scott. She is saying happy Sabbath. Sister Keisha. Happy Sabbath, Sister Sheena. All right, good. That's your people, man. All right. And Jasmine Cornwall, she is saying... Happy Sabbath all. Happy Sabbath all. Uh, Pastor Isado, saying happy Sabbath saints. Blessings. Okay, we are Talita. What she is saying to us, Brother Danley? Night all. Happy Sabbath. Happy right. Sabbath to you, Talita. All right. We are Maureen Dottin, saying happy Sabbath from Toronto. So Toronto is in the house. That's all right. All the way from Canada. All right. We have Francis Hamlet. Welcome to the hamlets. Welcome to the hamlets. Good. Good. Happy Sabbath, Uncle. All uh, right. That is the people, man. All right, yes, right. Man. Family. Like, family. Yes, man. Uh, good, man. Good. Nice to know that your family have you, right? Mm. We have Cam Noel saying, Happy Sabbath, all. His land. He's requesting a song. All right. So let us continue to sing. Emlyn Thomas is saying, Happy Sabbath. Viewing from Toronto. Toronto. Plenty of Toronto people in the house tonight. Yes, yeah. Ask them, Pastor Paul, to share the life. Yeah, man. Remember yeah, to so share it. That's important. Yeah. So share the, share the page, uh, you know, share the link so people can join and they can share the blessing that, is, that we are enjoying here tonight. You know, it's very important that when good things are happening, you don't keep it for yourself because most of them turn on the television and you read you and it's set up bad news. But when good things is happening on the internet, don't keep it to yourself, all right? Share it so everyone can be a part of it, all right? So let's continue to sing it. As we go back to our request, right? And then our next request. All right, Sister Kisha is from who? From Vicky Kato, and she's asking for hymn number 109, mm -hmm. Marvelous Grace. All right, hymn 109, Marvelous Grace. <laughs> From Sister Sally Maras, 632. 632. All right, 632. Oh, we signed that already. All right, so Sister Sally, you got this one already? All right, so we have um, Niza Letty saying, Him 100, great is thy faithfulness. So we'll sing this one, and this will be our last one for this evening. All right, those of you who are not, unable to sing it, we want you to join us as we sing this one. Great is thy faithfulness. Because even though we didn't get an opportunity to sing the one you requested, we will all join and sing this final one.
Whatever he says, he will do. Amen. And that's the God that we need to serve. We need to serve him in the good times and serve him in the bad times. That's right. All right, at this point in time, we'll deal with some promotion. What is happening throughout the conference? All right? So we want you to, we want you to tell us and tell the viewing audience what is happening in your district, if anything is happening. Well, I know for, for now a lot of evangelistic campaigns are going on. Like in the mountain area, Sister Pancho is blowing the trumpet. I was there on Wednesday night, and she's doing a wonderful job for God. That's in the mountain area, and also in the Paul's area. I know that um, Pastor um, Ella Houston is preaching the word of God up there as well. He's blowing the trumpet. I was there last week Friday. So I know a lot of things is happening. Anything is happening in your area, Brother Danley? Well, in my area, um, it's not happening yet, but mm -hmm. it's happening on the 15th of June. We have the District Youth Federation launch. Mm -hmm. So we're going to launch, you know, the District Youth Federation. And it's going to be a wonderful time where all the youths are going to come out and display uh, the uniform clubs. Mm -hmm. And they're going to, you know, introduce the new district personnel who okay. are chosen to represent in the federation. So okay. that is what's going to happen that's, uh, next week. Okay, good. Uh, but uh, Ike? Yes, well, what continues to happen? Prison ministries. Mm -hmm. We have a team from Rose that visit the prison every second Sabbath of every month. Okay. So this Sabbath they'll be visiting the prison and they're doing wonderful things at Her Majesty's prison. All right, good. Thank you very much. Sister Kisha, anything happening up in Bylands up there? We're preparing presently for an upcoming crusade with Pastor Charles. Okay. Well, Pastor Charles District, actually. So it will be in August, so we're working and getting plans in place, so that's what's coming up. Okay, good. All right. And Brother Shima, anything happening in your area? Only one thing I've got to think about Pastor. Tell us. And that's on the 10th. Uh -huh. right. Beach picnic. Yes, man. So we're preparing <laughs> the Pathfinder to camp up on, on the beach on Sunday uh -huh. and uh, do some honors with the rest of the those who will be camping there. Oh, okay, good. Right. So I, I don't think you heard what he said clearly. <laughs> this Monday, we'll have a beach picnic. All the Adventist people in Grenada yeah. will be assembling on Batway Beach. It will be a grand time up there. Mm -hmm. And we're not just going and walk up and down and watch each other. No, we're having activities. There are volleyball, there are road race, cricket, you know. And, and what is happening, they are actually camping. So from, from Sunday, they will be up there mm -hmm. and they will be camping up there and having a good time up there. So we're encouraging you, even though you're not a Seventh day Adventist, you can come up there and have good Christian fellowship. Mm -hmm. Come up there and mingle with the Adventist people, man. Come and mingle with good Christian young people. And as a result of that, your life will be influenced by the Spirit of God walking through those individuals who will be up there. All right, so we're looking forward to seeing you up there, right? At this point, we just want to tell you a little about the topic. You know, many of us, we are pathfinders. Mm -hmm. Some of us are master guides and those who may be viewing, they are adventurers. Mm -hmm. Right? This is the uniform club of the church, as Brother Danley just mm -hmm. mentioned. And mind you, let me tell you, um, in my district, that is Western One, we already launched the Youth Federation. And um, then we want to launch the Youth, the, the, the uniform club of the church. 
So we'll be doing that with a, a massive convention. Um, we had a date planned for the 29th, but however, we have to change it due to certain circumstances. But you, it, it will be made more or less on the 6th of July. We'll be launching the Uniform Club in the Western Run District. So if you're around the area, you can come and give us your support. This will be at the Mongramby Seventh-day Adventist Church. All right? Mm -hmm. Right, so you know, as I was saying, that many of us are pathfinders, you know, and, and one of the pathfinder law says something very interesting. He said, I will be a servant of God and a friend to man. What, what do you understand by that? A servant of God and a friend to man. Any one of you can respond and tell us what you think about what, what, what does that statement mean to you? Well, a servant of God, to me, a servant of God is one who yields himself to God to be mm -hmm. used by God. Right, that's a servant, you know, and um, uh, being a servant of God you cannot but administer to human beings. You cannot but reach out to your fellow men. You know, you have to. Brotherly love must come in because God, with God's love shed in your heart, you must uh, be able to share it abroad to everyone. Okay, good. Right, and those of you who are viewing, you can also, you can also comment. We'll, we'll, we'll um, make reference to your comment as you do so, all right? Because Colin gives you saying, Happy Sabbath, everyone. Uh, can you see our king is saying, Happy Sabbath, my son, my son. Your mother is watching blessing right she, she says she's my mother yeah she treats me really well we have a really good relationship right god bless you nice to have you online right and um josh keto, josh keto. Josh keto is saying what he's saying he's viewing but I, happy sabbath mm -hmm. viewing from london right so we have people from all over the place happy all sabbath, the way from josh. london right and then we have allison she's saying happy sabbath to everyone happy sabbath happy to you. Sabbath. all right and katherine isado right um Sister Kisha, what she say? Because I said happy birthday, I'm not welcome. Isn't today the Sabbath day birthday? Hey, happy we, Sabbath. Well, we didn't Sister see Sister. that. <laughs> Sister Kisha, you didn't see the happy birthday, man. Happy birthday too. Because every every week, Earth celebrates their birthday. You know, many times we wait once a year to celebrate our birthday, once a year for wedding anniversary, and different things. Once a year, some people look forward for Valentine's, but we look every week. For the sabbath celebration all right amen, amen. so happy birthday again amen. sister Catherine. all right and we have um kwasi he's saying good night sister kisha jude <laughs> says good night we are looking on good night, jude. <laughs> all that's right okay good that's your son yeah, jude. all right good right there's another statement and judy pathfinder that says be a servant of god and to go on god's errand right but uh but I, I what what you understand by that to go on God's errand? Well, first of all, um, a servant of God must understand what is God's purpose for his or her life, mm -hmm. and it's not about you. Mm -hmm. It's not about me. There are things we may like, but God may give us an errand that we may not like. Mm -hmm. But we have to be true servants. We must be willing. We must be humble. We must be always seeking to know what is God's purpose and his will for our lives. And as God sends, as he directs, we will be willing to go. Whether we innately like what we are given to do or not, mm -hmm. just to know that we are doing what God wants us to do. Amen. And he is pleased with what we are doing. Okay, good. Online viewers, when you, when, when you hear a statement, I will go on God's errand, what, what, what do you understand by that? Right, let me see if you have any response coming from for that point. Nobody is making a, a, a response to that as, as, as yet. All right, so I want to ask you something personally, right? Starting with Brother Shima, what ministry are you involved in? Or you tell us a little about any ministry that you're involved in in church and you know, give the viewers a little insight of who you are and what you're involved in in your Christian experience. After every one of us do that, then we have a special music, we'll take a break. So just tell us what is what ministry are you involved in? Well, in church, I'm involved in various ministries as a church organization. Mm -hmm. But my main role is the, Speak the elder, being the elder. Okay, first elder? The okay. first elder. Okay, good. Church. But I like helping people. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm an electrician <coughs> by profession, so sometimes somebody, especially those people who don't, who are of age, living alone, I like to help them with whatever electrical problem or little problem they have around their house. Uh -huh. Help fix it for them. And I use that as a ministry in, in a lot of cases. Okay, good. Right, before um, Sister Kisha res responds to the question, Sister Kathy Alexander-Williams is saying, Happy Sabbath to all. 
means to me, like to go on God Aaron, means to me always being ready to do God's will whenever he's ready for you. All right? And this is always in a state of readiness. Yes. It's like a doctor on call. So even though you lie down home and you hook up your wife and the phone ring and they say there is an emergency, you have to leave and go. Hmm, sure. Right? That's the kind of state we should be in at all times if we say I will go on God's yes. errand. All right? And Chrissy Noel, she's saying happy Sabbath. And JC Date is saying preaching, preaching the gospel. All right? To go on God's errand is preaching the gospel. All right. Sister Kisha, what ministry are you involved in? Presently, I'm involved in the children's ministry. Mm -hmm. I love children. And... Uh, in my ministry, I seek to get the children involved in knowing more about Jesus, helping them to see Jesus as a friend, a savior, and not just someone that somebody is talking about, but try to introduce them to Jesus in such a way that they will want to have a relationship with him even at that tender age. So once they start from that tender age, they will grow up to be, as a young person, as a youth, having Jesus as one of their best friends, and later on, they too will be sharing Jesus. And even at that age, I try to tell them, you can tell somebody about Jesus. So usually at the church, we'll encourage them after Sabbath, when you go home, tell mommy what happened in Sabbath school today, and even tell your friends when you go back to school or with whomever. So you always be sharing with someone, just a little something, share your tag, share whatever the story. So we give them like one little idea, share something. So not anything big, but once you start sharing little by little, Eventually, you will be used to sharing what you have learned, so it will be easy for you. But my true passion, besides sh sharing with the children, I love welcoming the visitors at church. Okay. Not maybe on the mic or so, but just after service, walk up to them and make sure you know greet them, find out how it was. Mm -hmm. To me, that gives me joy. Just okay. knowing that you came from wherever just to be here and worship with us, it means a lot. And to let you know that someone in the congregation cares that you're here. Yeah. And that's, that's very important because you make reference to that. I remember when I went to school in Trinidad, when I arrived there. I was, going, I was attending um, church in a specific congregation. I don't want to right. mention it because, you know, you're playing the training online. <laughs> and when I, was going, when I was attending church there, Sabbath after Sabbath after Sabbath, I was never welcome. You know, right. never noticed. I, maybe I made, a, I made a few points in Sabbath school. And eventually I got a, an opportunity to go to our next church. And when I went there, I was embraced. And I never go back to the next one unless I go to visit on some occasion. <laughs> yeah, because so that's very important, you know, the warmness of the people. When you when somebody comes to church, and even I, there is a friend of mine I invite to church, and he says, you know, sometimes when you go to church, people just watching you. They don't even come in and talk to you and see how you're doing and things like that. And he's not an Adventist, but he comes with me occasionally. So this is very important. This is an excellent ministry, Sister Kisha, all right? Amazing. All right, but I can show like Shaku. I Shaku. Nice. Right, I tried so. to get his name at the night, brother. So you had it very good. <laughs> right. Good. All right. So for me, I've, I'm involved in many different areas in the church. Um, recently joined the ranks of the eldership. Um, I'm the Pathfinder director. I, I'm i also part of the, the um, community service team. And um, lead, I'm the assistant leader there but my what I like is doing Bible studies mm -hmm. okay. and for me I would have started a Bible study in the, in the community about four and a half years ago at my in-laws home now that Bible study was not for Adventists my intention was not for Adventists it was for non-Adventists and as a result of that Bible study um, one of the members got baptized mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. to a Amen. recent um, from a recent crusade. However, that Bible study came to an abrupt. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let yeah. me ask you. So when that person got baptized and they gave their life to Jesus, how you felt? Man, I can't explain it. Uh. There's no word to explain it. <laughs> I, I was just imagining. I was wondering if I was dreaming, but uh. it was reality. All right, good, good. So there is a joy that yes, overwhelms yes, you yes. when you minister, when you're involved in ministry, and people give their lives to Jesus, all right? Yes, there is a joy. Definitely. All right, go ahead, continue. Yes, it, that Bible study came to an abrupt stop. I had a challenge in my family and I had to leave the island or whatever. However, I, start, I tried to restart it the same way. It started and it ended again. However, what I've done, I've started, I've organized one at church. And this one is in full flesh right now. Amen, amen. amen. All right, good. Yeah. Although I'm not the one personally doing the presentation. But you organize it. Yes, so this All is right. what we, we, what we um, presently 
um, have in the community, the same community, the same mm. people, mm -hmm. but it's happening at the churches. Then. Okay, and that's good. Mm -hmm. And and sometimes when things are happening, you don't always have to be in the forefront, eh? Exactly. Right. Sure. Because when you see a vehicle running with all the speed or whatsoever, you don't see the engine. <laughs> <laughs> you understand? Yes. But it is moving. Yes. Right? right? So that's what's important is that you're getting the work done, mm -hmm. even though you are not in the spotlight, Definitely. right? Because while we are sitting here, there are people behind beyond the scenes. That is making sure everything is going very smoothly, right? Yeah. So we are the one in the forefront, but there are people behind who are fueling things right here, okay? Mm -hmm. Brother Danley, yes, sir. yes, man. Tell us what ministry you're involving and uh, give us some insight of what is happening in your life as you listen to ministry. Well, at present in my church at Mount Fan, um, the family life director there, and um, looking to push, you know, better relationship with families. Uh, I myself want to be, you know, involved in your family life as it relates to the spiritual aspect, you know, and I want to ensure that everybody uh, is drawn to Christ, you know, ensure that you do Bible studies in your family, your families together, and I'm um, working on, you know, ensuring that um, persons, you know, have that spiritual connection with God through their family, because a lot of the time, sometimes we have a personal devotion, we may study the Bible for ourselves, but then the rest of the family might be left out. True. You know, so that is something that I'm working on, you know, in getting the families together. Um, and that, of course, is by having a relationship with the family members. Okay. You good. know, so that, that area. I'm also, you know, um, the, with the youth, you know, and, and ensuring that the youths are well grounded in the doctrines of the church, ensuring that the youths, you know, um, are paid keen attention to, you know, in regards to them coming to Christ and uh, having that relationship that would last until jesus comes okay good. right so i'm also also the first seller at the moment from seven adventist church mm -hmm. you know so um i'm involved in evangelism and uh, that is of course reaching out to the community uh where we are presently working you know that is the, the vicinity right and so we're trying to as much as possible ensure that persons give their hearts to christ before it is too late amen amen all right so plenty things plenty things are happening here right let's look at some of the online viewers right sister jasmine is saying to go on god's errand means to go and to do what he asks you to do and she quote matthew 28 19 and 20 that's the mandate all right let's yes, go down right um jc date is saying preaching the gospel let's go down all right but i got what, what victor saying there Happy Sabbath to all my Mission Life brothers and sisters watching from Florida, USA. All right. Okay. Happy Sabbath, Brother Victor. All right. Somebody just be referring to something that I said. Brother Ellis Clark, guys, he is viewing from Tobago. That's one of my good friends. I right. say pleasant Sabbath to all. Pastor Charles is saying, Sister Keisha. Your pastor is listening. Your pastor is listening. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Sister Kathy Alexander is saying, can you sing? Oh, we, we have to sing next week because... Because you finished the singing already, right? Let's go down, let's go down. Kizzy Fletcher Jones is saying good night. Right. So we will now take a, a break. But before we take that break, let me tell you a little what I like to do, you know. Sometimes you think, you know, as a pastor, you just like to preach and so on. Preaching is my passion. You wake me up. I always tell people, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning, I'm ready to preach. That is my passion. <laughs> right? I just love to preach. But um, something that I really love to do as well, and my wife could attest to that, is to help people. So almost every Sunday, I go to help somebody. And the last time somebody told me you should revive the, the Nehemiah project. Because I always go and help somebody build something. Go help somebody line out a house. Go help somebody do some electrical. Do a little plumbing. Something. I just like to help people. And once they have a need and the needs are satisfied, then that gives me a, a level of satisfaction. So Christianity and ministry is not only about preaching, but also most so meeting the needs of the people. And when you meet the needs, then the person can really confide in you. So at this point, we'll take a break and we'll be back shortly as we have our special music. I wrote this song. It's called Lord Take It All. No matter what we face, we serve a God who is more than able to deliver us and to set us free. All we need to do is to give him our worries. God is great and he's mighty. There's nothing he cannot do. Hallelujah. The song goes like this. Sometimes I'm discouraged. Sometimes I am weary, oh Lord. 
Sometimes I am not myself Sometimes I am down But I know my Jesus He is looking out for me Yes, Lord I'm gonna give you all my pain I'm gonna cast it on him so, Lord, take it all Take all of my pain I surrender all I surrender all All of my shame God, you are good Lord, you are God God, you are good Lord, you are God, so I surrender all. Satan is a liar. He's the great deceiver. Uh -uh. He is coming after you. So let me tell you what to do. Surrender to Jesus Call upon his mighty name He will save you There's nothing he can do So, Lord, take it all Take it all Take all of my pain I surrender all, I surrender all, all of my shame. God, you are good, Lord, you are God. God, you are good, Lord, you are God. So I surrender all. Jesus is coming soon. Trumpets will sound People be ready To be in that city No more pain, no more sorrow A brighter tomorrow I can't wait to get there be with my father so Lord, I surrender all I surrender all all of my shame God you are good Lord you are God God you are good Lord you are God so I surrender all so Take it all, take it all, take all of my pain. I surrender all, I surrender all, all of my shame. God, you are good, Lord, you are God. God, you are good, Lord, you are God. So I surrender all God, you are good Lord, you are God God, you are good Lord, you are God So I surrender all God, you are good Lord, you are God God, you are good Lord, you are God, so I surrender all. All right, we have to thank Brother Keller and George for that special music that God should take it all. You know, there are many times we have challenges, we have problems, you know, and we want to control our own lives, but God should take it all you know don't only give god some and then hold back the rest and it's important that we do that because when we do that 
then God can really help us. We shouldn't try to resolve a path for ourselves and try to fix it. Let us just give all to God and God will fix it up and he'll give us a new start. He'll give us a new experience. All right. Sure. So we reached to the part of the program where many people um, love a lot and you can be involved in that part. All right. For those of you who don't comment at all, I know many times you comment when those time comes around. This time is quiz time. What's the time it is? Quiz, quiz time. time. Nice. It's quiz time. And I will start with the first question. The first question says, um, Now when they saw the boldness of blank and blank and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they, they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. So who are those two blank that we, that we missing there, right? So you wait and you respond. While you wait and you respond, you take a few comments. Um, Shirley's, Shirley's Hamlet is saying pleasant Sabbath to all, especially my cousin, Ike and Shima Hamlet. Well, happy Sabbath, Happy Shola. Sabbath, Shola. All right. Okay. Thank you. Good. All right. So while we're waiting, let me repeat the question. Now when they saw the boldness of blank and blank, so I believe that is persons, so the boldness of two persons, and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled. And they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Alright? So we're waiting on the response. Now is your time. You can respond. Who are the two persons? That they had boldness. They were unknown. They were ignorant men. Right? Well, they, they get a big clue there because they say they were ignorant men. So you know he's looking for two men. Alright? They were unknown, but they were also bold. Alright? So while you're waiting on the, um, the response. Alright? So John, John Mark says what? Peter. Peter and um, Jasmine. Jasmine. and Jasmine Conwell. What do you say, brother? Ike? Peter and John. Peter and John. I wonder if that's what we have here. Yes. Yes, right? Charmin Pierre, you say Peter and John. Yes, it's Peter and John. Acts chapter 4 and verse 13. When Peter and John start to perform miracles, so, and the way they spoke, they said that those men have been with Jesus. You know, people don't have to know who you are, you know, but by how you conduct yourself. You say you have to be a Christian. Yes. She yes. has to be a Christian. All right. We don't need to blow the trumpet by telling people oh, I'm a Seventh Day Adventist. No. But by the way we conduct ourselves, we should reflect Jesus. All right. Yes. So, Brother Dali, you do the next question. Question number two. God had chosen the blank things of the world to conform the things which are blank. Mm -hmm. Mercy. All right. So we have two blank there. Let me read it again. God had chosen the blank things of the world to confound the things which are blank. Alright, so what, what, are, what, are, what are those two things? Alright. Trisha Jones-Williams, she just joined in. Welcome, Trisha. Mm -hmm. Alright. So why are we waiting on, on, the, on, the, on the comments to come in? Remember tonight we're speaking about ministry. So we want to encourage you... Um, to, to share the page, tell your friend, tell your family. Don't only look at it for yourself, man. Share it in the groups that you're on on Facebook. Share it in your WhatsApp group. Share it so everyone can be a part of that, all right? John Max says, seen and unseen. All right, John Max, you need to try again. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, you need to try again, all right? You need to try again. All right, good effort, but you need to try try again, all right? And um, it's, always, it's, always a, it's always a privilege to be here on Youth Life because... When you hear, you know, young people can see that God can also use them in ministry. So, so you don't, or you don't know you have to resolve yourself to your to your church or so on. But you can step out into the into the open experience, into the open world, and be part of that. Jasmine Connor says, "Simple and wise." Close, right? You're getting there. You're close. <laughs> I think we should give them a quiz. You're close, close right? Yeah. So, so let me tell you, the, the, you can find it in First Corinthians chapter one. If if you continue like that, our brother Daniel will tell you the verse. <laughs> but First Corinthians chapter one, Look, somebody, somebody. right, right, Jesus. Jesus. Sister Kisha, what, what, what Sister Kachin is saying there? She's saying weak. That's mm -hmm. one of the blank, correct? Sister is it all? Ah, the mm -hmm. other blank. Mm -hmm. Sister is it all? You're warming up. So you have one inside her. And Sister Jasmine, you have one inside her. So if you meet up or let put it together, you all could get the right answer. Alright. Right. right. Brother Ali, give them the verse because they, they're not finding it. Right, it's verse 27. Give them the verse. So it's 
1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 27. Mm -hmm. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 27. And we're waiting on the responses. Right, repeat the question for us, Brother Danley. Right, the question reads, God had chosen the blank things of the world to confound the things which are blank. All right. And we're waiting on the response. The, the, the clue is 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 27. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 27. Right, we're waiting, we're waiting. We're waiting. So it's probably based on the scripture and the translation. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, we're waiting, but we're waiting. <laughs> and you see nothing. All right, we'll have, we have to give them this one. Right, we'll have to give them this one. So we'll put brother, um, sister Isado and um, sister Jasmine together and we'll give you the answer, right? Well, well, sister Isado got it now. So she said it weak and wise. Right? And basically that, he took, he took the foolish thing of the world to confirm the wise, or he took the weak thing of the world to confirm the mighty. Alright? Mm -hmm. And um, Sister Trisha is saying good night and happy Sabbath, brethren. Right? Mm -hmm. Wise and wicked. Some people, yeah, you know, start to get it. Exactly. So let's go. But I like now. I can shaku. Alright. Mm -hmm. Question, the question for you. Do not eat a chef, mm -hmm. I provided a meal which satisfied many, many people. Who am I? All right. <laughs> Who was this person? Should I repeat that? Yes, repeat the question. Do not a chef, I provided a meal which satisfied many, many people. Who am I? Hmm. Brother, 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 um, sister, sister, Charmaine Bihari just saying foolish and wise. We will move from this questionnaire. Next one. What? Somebody say Jesus. <laughs> oh, it's not go Jesus. Go to Peter say Jesus. No, it's not Jesus. No, it's not Jesus. Colin Gibbs say Jesus. No, it's not Jesus. In this question, it's not Jesus. Ah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> John, say, a little boy with two loaves and three fishes. This song is very specific, man. All right, so that's it. All right, it's like five loaves. All right. All right, five loaves and two fishes, actually. All right? But the guy can't say she had they just yeah, say what the, the, the figures. The, yeah, the figures. So it was a little boy. Yeah. yeah, the little boy. Alright? Alright, for our next question, it says, But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am too young. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever. Do not say I am too young. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you to. Who to whom was he speaking? Hmm. All right. So we're waiting, we're waiting. Yeah, right, you got the answer, yeah. <laughs> right, so we're waiting. Repeat the question for us again. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am too young. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you to. To whom was he speaking? Mm hmm. So this was a hard task because God gave this person a, a task. The person was young. They are afraid of people. Mm -hmm. They were young. So if they were young, it wasn't Moses. Can no. Paul said Moses? No, yeah. not, no. Moses. Not, not Moses. Moses is already a big man running away and going in the bush. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't Moses. It was a young person. Yeah, and we didn't have that clue here, but God even said to them, don't get married. Right. Right. Yeah, right. so it's Jeremiah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so we come with the mm -hmm. same answer as well, Jeremiah. Good. Jeremiah. So let's go to the next question. Right. Who said these words to Amaziah when he was called by God to prophesy to the Israelites? I was no, I was no prophet, neither was I a prophet's son. But I was a herdsman, mm -hmm. and I gathered of sycamore fruit. Mm -hmm. Repeat the question again. Who said these words to Amaziah when he was called by God to prophesy to the Israelites? I was no prophet, neither was I a prophet's son, but I was a herdsman and a gatherer of sycamore fruit. All right. Who said this to Amaziah? Who said these words? Who said these words to Amazon? Mm -hmm. 
So we wait in, we wait in. Alright, you know, and in the Bible as you can, as you, as you look at the, the Bible, there are many times God called different people. Yeah. Right. And when God called them, no, it's not Moses. Shadina Scott, no, it's not mm -hmm. Moses. Right? You know when God called different people, people had different responses. Mm -hmm. What were some of the responses that people have? For example, Moses. What, what Moses said when God called him? Moses said he could not speak. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. he, he had stammering lips. Eh? Yeah. He was not eloquent. He wasn't eloquent. Right? And there are many times we, you know, God calls us and we think, well, I'm not capable. You know, but something that we will discover as we, as we get into the program tonight, as we try to finish up the quiz, is that when God calls you, He qualifies you. Sure. Right? He calls you and He qualifies you. Because if you look at the first question, first question say, those men were unlearned and ignorant. But then when they, the way those men spoke, they were qualified by Jesus. So now when they spoke, people know, hey, they have been in the school of Jesus. Right? Mm -hmm. And this is important. So Moses, no, not Moses, you waiting? All right, the question says, let me just repeat the question, question number five. After this one, you have last question. All right, it says, who said these words to Amaziah when he was called by God to prophesy to the Israelites? And it says, the person said, I was not, I was no prophet, neither was I a prophet's son, but I was an herdsman and a gatherer of sycamore fruit. So the person is just a little man, you know, by the wayside, no, no kind of stripes. He wasn't within the ranks. You know what he accepts. So the, 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 if you, if you give me the clue, you already give me the clue in two today. Give them a clue, man. Right? Well, I thought we text. Something is not going right with the live. There is an echo when somebody is speaking, right? So they are the, the technicians and them will, will address that. Thank you, Sister Trisha. Trisha yeah. Okay? Right. Thank you. So the, the clue is from, is in Amos chapter 7. Amos chapter 7. And the person said, I was no prophet, neither was I a prophet's son, but I was a herdsman, a gatherer of sycamore fruit. Who said those words when he was called by God? Who said those words? All right, let's go. All right, and it's very, it's very important that we, that we understand that when God calls somebody, that they make, the, they make themselves available, you know, to, to be used by God. All right? Samantha right. Daniel. Samantha, Samantha Daniel say Amos, Amos right? That's right. correct. And that's the correct answer. So the last question, question Amos number six. Amos. That's our final question. Mm -hmm. It says, my father had children with three different women in one household. But I was used to do great exploits. I was used, sorry, to do great exploits by the Lord. Who was I right? Let me repeat it again. My father had children with three different women in one household, but I was used to do great exploits by the Lord. Who was I? All right. And let me give you a clue one time. This person they did the exploit not in their home, but they did the exploit in Egypt. <laughs> All right? They did the exploit in Egypt. All right. Gertrude says Joseph, and it is Joseph, right? right? Not David. Not David, but it's Joseph, okay? It's Joseph. All right, so we thank you very much for all of, all of you who participated in the quiz. We had, a, we had a good time, and I hope that you learned a lot. And now we're getting into some discussion. So what will be happening here? Every time I ask a question, and the panelists are responding, you can respond, all right? And when you respond, I will make reference to the comments that you give, okay? So we're getting into it, right? The guiding text as we discussed tonight, um, what is it in thy hand? Um, it's important to understand that we should always be in the hand of God. Yes. Mm -hmm. That is number one. We should always be in the hand of God. And as we were making reference earlier to Moses, that when God called Moses, Moses said, Papa God, I'm not eloquent enough. Mm -hmm. True. You know, I'm not qualified because although I was in Egypt, when I go back down there, I know I cannot speak like them. You know, right. and there are many times they are intimidated, intimidated about, um, from people or about people or the environment or the setting because we think that I'm not qualified to go there. Sure. But when God sent you is because God knows that you have some innate ability that he will reveal to you at the appointed time. Okay? okay. So let us look at some of the things now. So um, something that many times people ask, you know, 
they want to go and join some ministry, they want to start something, but they want to know, do you have to be a theologian, Brother Danley? You're the closest to me, so I'll ask you that question. Do you have to be a theologian, you have to go to university and study theology to, to start a ministry? Well, no, you don't have to go to theological school or, you know, further your studies in theology mm -hmm. to be in ministry, right? Um, you can be in ministry and want to become a servant of God. Mm -hmm. God is going to use you to minister to people. Okay. But I want to say something concerning that. You know, y'all can respond. This is a general question. This one is open flow. And when I think about many of the apostles and the disciples, I, have, I can't remember they were attending um, theo theological school. Some of them would have actually walked with Jesus and would have heard, um, would have seen him and how he, he lived his life and gotten examples from him. There were the 12 disciples, but there were other persons who also followed close behind. Some people, they want to leave Jesus out of their sight. All right? um, Paul and all of those persons, many of them did not attend theological school, but they had an experience with the Spirit of God because they were willing to be used by God. Okay, good. So viewers, as, as we discuss this question, do you have to go to theological school to start a ministry? Or you can just jump up and just say you want to start a ministry? Alright, so as, we, as you wait and you respond, okay? I just want to ask, well, most of the, the panelists, they have already given their response. So how long have you been in, in ministry, Sister Keisha? I can say even before I got baptized, mm -hmm as a Christian just from going to church I remember very young myself my cousin Alicia and Sammy and also Neela yeah so it was four of us we used to go to the hospital on lunchtime and visit the sick persons and pray with them so I said four but now it's come back later we say it was five of us it was like Alicia, Stacy, Sammy and Neela and myself right so we always after lunch we'll go to the hospital and just pray with the sick people at the hospital and even from then, I realized that I actually love going and pray for sick people. So mm -hmm. even now, even if I cannot make it for some reason to go to some service, once they announce that they're going and pray for some sick person, I really try to fit it in my schedule, even if I have to deny myself of something. Because I guess there is a law within me to for those kind of activity. So I believe even before I actually went into the water just by having a relationship with Jesus, you want to share and you want to see people enjoy good health. So in that light, they actually visiting and praying for the sick, that part, I would say even before. But my love for it came about from knowing Jesus. Okay, good. Yes. So, but I agree with um, Sister Ketisha George is saying to us. Sister so Ketisha George says, you just, you just have to be available to be used by God. Right. So, so you don't have to go to theo theological school. You don't have to go to university to start a ministry. You just have to be available. Make yourself available to God. Empty yourself of self, and then God can, can use you, right? Somebody here, uh, Nisi is saying, locked in from Canada, sending love to my three cousin. Oh, boy. Family inside. All right? Hello, Nisi. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay, good. So I should have, I should have let you read, um, read the comment. Okay? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yes. Ma okay. So, I want to ask you, brother Shima, do you see your ministry has been successful or you just find you're doing it but you ain't seeing no result? What, what do you think? My, um, my ministry is successful. Why you say so? When it comes to things that has been doing, done in the name of God and for God, and that is what God wants you to do. It's always successful. Okay. You may not see what you want to see. So I might have a goal mm -hmm. in my mind to achieve this. I may not see it happen. But the success it might be come sometime years after. Okay. You understand? But once it's what God wants you to do and you do it. It is it will and it is always successful. Alright. So I want to ask the, the, the online viewers. How would you know? Right? Those of you who are involved in ministry and those of you who are not involved in ministry, um, you can respond as well. How would you know when you're involved in a ministry? How would you know if that ministry is successful? How would you know that? 
All right, um, Brother Danny, how would you how would you know if you have if your ministry is successful? You said that you're the first seller, you said you have some plans for the family, right? So if you plan to have good relationship with the family to foster communication and this is not happening, would you say you're getting success or not? Well, if it's not happening, I would say I'm not getting success. Right. That's how I would look at it. Mm -hmm. You know, but I believe that once we leave it in the hands of God, once we mm -hmm. pray and ask God to take control of uh, the ministry, mm -hmm. let God be the one using us and His Holy Spirit is going to, you know, carry His, his message to the individuals, the hearers. I believe that uh, it would be successful because God might be sowing a seed. Uh, God might be you know just letting somebody know and they, that would be a witness unto them and so we have to let the Holy Spirit be the one uh, you know to bring about growth okay. all right we are not the individuals who you know mm -hmm. bring growth mm -hmm. all right we are not the ones who bring growth all right so I saw brother uh, Pastor Isidore saying as Seventh-day Adventists we believe in the priesthood of all believers and in a special sense every member is a minister however one's ministry is based on the spiritual gifts and this is very important because i can i might be able to preach but somebody might be able to teach somebody might better at prophecy um somebody might uh, have the gift of healing and different things right um what's this cassandra is saying there but like indeed success in ministry cannot be adequately measured by human parameters. All right. I love that one. All right, and that's that's very true. Yeah. Um, example. Yeah, go ahead. For example, you might have, you might see a, a trend in, in your church, mm -hmm. and you, it's, it's something that is, um, see, almost everybody did, so it's public. Mm -hmm. It's not somebody, somebody seeing you trying to want to preach, but they realize that your church have a problem in that area. And you, you're you using the pulpit and you're preaching about it, but you're not, you're not finding, you're not seeing changes in the members. But then you might sit down there alone church, in, church, in church and a member might come to you and say, Pastor, you know what you said there was really true. And this is what I tried. And this is what happened in my home and so forth. And I'm doing. That is success. Yeah. You may not see everybody doing it. Mm -hmm. But that one person. And that is also an encouragement. True, true. true. All right. And um, the Bible says that when the Bible gave a, a, a kind of, how will I say it? A chronological order in so of success. He say one plant and next one water. Exactly. Right? I get the habit. He say Jesus give the increase. Exactly. Because um, recently I was on the internet and I was um, some some friends from Colombia because I was over there. And they, they sent me some PTS of a baptism. Baptism of three person. So when I saw the baptism, I called my wife. I said, girl, look at my souls and everything. You know, because I was working with those people before I left. Exactly. You know, so I, I know that they were making strides towards that direction. But as I just said, one plant, and next one water, and Jesus give the increase, right? So I could have said, I don't get no result, you know, I wasn't successful. But now that I left, I see photos of that, and I felt good. All right? So let us read some of the comments there. But she might read that comment for us from Colin. Colin says, in ministry, we sow a seed. And the Holy Spirit is the one that brings conviction. So once we do our part and bring across the message, it is a success in itself that the word the word went forth. And it should be later on. Sorry. And later on. Yeah. And, and later on we may see the results of of fruition. Of, fruition, mm -hmm. of the seed that was sown. Right. So you may not see it no. Exactly. But down the road. We can, we can see that. Let me ask you a question. This is a general question. And even those who are viewing, I want you to respond to that. Have you ever given the opportunity to get involved in a ministry, to do something? And you said, no, um, I don't want to do it. Um, call brother look to do it because he's more qualified. Have you ever had that experience in your maybe not now or in your early Christian experience? And those of you who are viewing, have you ever, ever had that experience? They call you and they say, well, um, I want you to do a scripture reading and um, do a Vespa or something. I want you to go and help me uh, go and visit in the hospital with me and say, no, me, I don't like sick people and, you know, <laughs> and them kind of thing. I don't like all the hospital or smell, so better you call this person, different thing. So have you ever had that experience before? So you, you recommended somebody who you think was more qualified than you. Have you ever had that experience? And what you think motivated you to make such a decision? You know, sometimes... Uh, uh, hold on, hold on. Uh, have you always said yes? So it's, who I'm speaking to here now is some yes men and a yes lady. Everything they ask you to do, you say yes. Um, 
when you when when I just started in in the in being serious about my Christian religion, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes you are you are afraid to do some things because you know you're fresh, you just start, you don't know if you go say the right thing or whatever. And sometimes they recommend why do you ask this person, why do you ask her, why me? But you know, God that's why the text says he used the weak things mm-hmm. to confirm the, those that are mighty. wise and mighty. Mm-hmm. So the example of Moses is that Moses had an issue. He used to stutter. But God said, I'm going to really use you to go to Pharaoh. God shows his power through weakness. True. And we must understand that. Where right. your weak is strong. And where we, that and that's the thing. And I always believe when God, I always wonder, why would God tell? Jacob, um, Isaac, your seed gonna be as the son of the, the sea, seashore, and their wives are barren. Mercy. <laughs> Mercy. <laughs> Think about it. Yeah. All these men wives were barren. Mm-hmm. Um, Jacob's wife was barren and that's um Rachel. Mm-hmm. And on, on the, the wife of Abraham, J- yeah. Abraham's wife was barren. Yeah. And, and he said, Your seed is gonna be like his son of the sea. All right. And so he's, he uses our weakness and we so we feel sometimes unworthy. We feel no, I can't do that. But it's not about me. It's about God walking through me. Amen. 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 And that's why we have to think about. All it. right. So let's read that comment there, brother. Dali, read that comment there for me, please, from Trisha. From Sister, Sister Trisha. Trisha Jones Williams. I believe success comes about when you see how God's power is changing people's lives as He walks through you. All right. And um, John Max is saying. You will know when your life is changing. Mm-hmm. And I believe that once you, people, people's lives are changing from your influence and your ministry, and your life is changing because of your influence, it means that the ministry is successful. Because something the Apostle Paul say, and sometimes when I pray, I always try to say that, especially when I finish preaching and so, that when I preach to others, I don't want to be a castaway. Mm-hmm. Because it, your, your influence of your ministry on others should have the same influence on you. Because you you shouldn't prepare someone for somebody or you plan to do something for somebody to minister to them and what you prepare was never ministered to to you. you. You waste your time. Yeah. Right? Because you are the first person you should preach to, the first person you should minister to. All right? So let me read some comments. Let us read some comments from online there. Uh, Mega Mind Joseph is saying what he's saying there. Have a question. Yeah, have a question. Let me see the question. Mega Mind Joseph. Directed to Pastor Paul. Paul. (laughs) Do you think that the greatest message a minister of the gospel can preach is the life he lives? Yes, and I always believe that because I have something that I say when I preach that your lifestyle speaks louder than your silver tongue. Because there are many, there are many pastors, ministers who can prepare a, a sermon, and because of a theological background, they can get deep into the Greek and deep into the Hebrew. And when they go on the stage, they can sound eloquent and very deep and profound. And then when you look at their life, their life speaks nothing. Amen. Right? That's why. That's why I like to focus on Matthew five six and that say, "Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven." So your life. Must speak louder, and let me let me let me make an next point. And after that point, then we will take a special music, and then we'll come back and take the rest of the viewers. The the point is that the point is that you can preach to others, and when you preach to others, you sound good. But when you live for others, and they see what what you preach and how you live, then they are gravitated, and they will absorb the message even better. Yeah. All right. So we will come. To, we will return shortly That's as true. we have a special music. you're going through when you've done all you can you're exhausted my friend and there's nothing else you can do when life overpowers you or someone betrays you you feel like nobody cares there's still one place i know 
When there's no place to go, I can go to the Master in prayer. I can go to the Master. He always listens. He welcomes my pleas because He cares about me. He won't overlook my petition. He's standing above and is watching in love. He's waiting my burdens to bear. He's got time for you and a place for me too. I can go to the Master in prayer. When the world turns on me, I'm so blind I can see. Doubts are everywhere. Turn me down And my spirit is bound I can't rise Above all When pain won't release me There's no peace within me I'm feeling like Life isn't fair When my night sleep is lost And I've turned and I've tossed I can go to the master in prayer He's watching in love, He's waiting my burdens to bear. He's got time for you and a place for me too. I can go to the Master in prayer. You can go to the Master. Standing above and is watching in love, he's waiting your burdens to bear. He's got time for you and a place for me too. You can go to the master in prayer. If life's a dead end, I can still recommend you can go to the master in prayer. Thank you very much. You know, want to welcome you back. I can go to the master. You know, many times when we have problems, go to best friend. Some people go to MP, you know, the parliamentary representative. Mm -hmm. Some people come to pastors. They go to OBI people. But I want to let you know tonight that when you have problems, you can go to the master. You can always go to the master. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible says before we call, he will answer. While we are speaking, he will hear. Yeah. We can always go to the master. All right. So we just want to continue. From where we left off before we left we were, i was responding to a question which i i completed before we left um so now sister melissa joseph mel thomas joseph she's saying can you introduce the panel for those of us who just started viewing okay no problem but I'll let the panel introduce themselves so you say your name and which church you're from all right so we start to my extreme right my name is shima hamlet I'm from the Samaritan Seventh-day Adventist Church. Right, and he's the first Ella of the Samaritan Seventh-day Adventist Church, okay? I am Keisha Butron from Byland Seventh-day Adventist Church. All right, and she's involved in the Children Ministries Department. And also, she's a dynamic preacher to her. She didn't tell us that, but I know that. <laughs> right, okay, next person. My name is Aika Shaku Hamlet. I'm from the Rosal SDA Church. All right, and what ministry are you involved in? Um, Pathfinders. Associate Elder, Community Services. And you like to give Bible studies? Bible studies. Right, yeah. you like to give Bible studies, right? And to my immediate right. Well, I am Dan Lee Noel from the Seventh-day Adventist Church at Mount Fan. And what ministry are you involved in? I'm involved in Family Life, Children's Ministry, and also, sorry, 
Youth Ministries. I'm also an elder at the Mount Fan Seventh Adventist Church. Okay, good. All right. So we continue now. Right. Do you think, Sister Sister Keisha, do you think there is a specific age, right? Do you think there is a specific age that we should that that you that you have to be to start ministry? And while you're thinking, let us see what Sister Cassandra is saying there. Brother Shima? Brother Ike, you speak with passion. You are a testimony to how God can use ordinary men to do extraordinary things. God bless. All right. Thank you for that motivation, Sister. All right. Somebody have a question. We'll come to your question just now. Sister Trisha Jones, hold on with the question. So the question that we have on the floor now, you can also respond, those who are viewing. Do you think you have to be a specific age? Are you too young or you too old? Or, uh, some age range when you have to start a ministry? Sister Keisha? No, Pastor. I don't think there is a specific age. You cannot say you're too young or you're too old. God has used all different kind of people, young and old, middle age. Look at Jeremiah, and it was one of the questions in the quiz. Mm -hmm. God called him when he was just seven years, and he used him in a mighty way. We have the young men like Cedric, Meshach, and Abednego, even Daniel. They were youths. Mm -hmm. God used them. And even you young people looking on, God can use you too. You're not too young, and you're not too old. He can use you. And even those who are looking on who are elderly or older, if I should say, he can use you too. He have used like Noah to preach and many other senior persons. If you were to look even in your congregation, I am certain you can identify an elderly person who are still witnessing for Jesus, who are still running some ministry. So, Pastor, I don't believe there is a particular age to say you have to be within that age range to be witnessing or having a ministry. No matter what age or how old you are, once you have a relationship with Jesus and you're willing to be a servant and you're allowing him to use you, he can use you to minister for him. All right, good. All right, well, I, I, as the panel to introduce themselves, and I always forget to introduce myself. All right, I'm Pastor Lambert Paul. I'm the pastor of the Western One District. All right, so as we, as, as we, um, Sister Kisha has just responded, you're not too young, you're not too old to be involved in ministry. All right, Sister Trisha Jones have a question. Danny, what's the question? A question is, is sharing your life Chain, sorry, is sharing your life-changing experience with others about the many ways God had been there for you in ministry, or is it seen as a normal part of life? Well, that's an interesting question. You know, I think um, that it... Go ahead, brother, Danny. I believe it is part of your ministry. Mm -hmm. You're evangelizing, if mm -hmm. you did not know. you By sharing your experience, persons are able to also get to know about God. You right. know, because it is only um, your experience uh, sometimes that persons might, you know, uh, get that knowledge, um, you know, that you have about God and they would be able to also want that knowledge. You know, it is by when we share our experience, they get to understand more about God. All right. I just want to confirm that. According to Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, the Bible says, But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Mm -hmm. In order to witness something, you must experience it. So when you are telling people what God has done to you and led you in different parts of your life, actually what you are doing, you are witnessing for Jesus because you're saying not only what more he has done for Moses and Elijah, no, but what he has done for you as an individual. So this is a ministry and this is what God has called us to do. Revelation tells us of, tells us that mm -hmm. they overcame the dragon by the blood of the of the lamb mm -hmm. and the word of the testimony. Of course, of course. So your testimony is the, is the greatest to me, the greatest way of sharing Jesus. Right. I have a question. I want to direct that question to Brother Aika Shaku. Right. That is your question. Mm -hmm. How do you how you started the Bible study ministry? Because the question is how does one begin a ministry? He said he started, he said he, 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 somebody got baptized, he said he had some circumstances in his family, he had to stop, he said he start again, he stopped, and he said right now it is happening in church. So where, how did you start that ministry? Tell us a little about that. Uh, how, and, and I want you to speak in line so those who are listening and those who are viewing, they can know how they can go about and start their own ministry. Frankly, the ministry started from a conference program where each church were given Bible studies to give out to persons in the community. 
and um, they had to answer questions. We would correct it and um, with the answers and give them back. After that, well, during that time, I I would go around sorties and give all those Bible studies. After I collect my children from school, together with me, they would we would go to business places and give Bible studies, collect what was done, mm -hmm. correct it, and give a new one. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, here you say something there, and this this jumped out at me. Yeah. For example, the Bible says when Noah preached, he and his family were saved. Yes. So you're saying that when you collect the children, yes. the children not too tired from school, but they're going out with you, daddy, and give out Bible study. Yes. It's... So this is a big point. Eh? He started the ministry and he didn't start alone. His children, he didn't send them home or carry them home. They were right there with him. So he was leading by example. All right. So this is a good point. Go ahead. Yes. However, when that aspect of the Bible study ended, there was that burning desire in me mm -hmm. to continue. Mm -hmm. Um, for me, I didn't feel totally qualified to do it on my own. But I was also personally involved in an online Bible study through uh, Amazing Facts. Okay. And later on, it is written. Mm -hmm. So, I know the, the technology is there, so that's a big help. Mm -hmm. So, after I continue doing my personal Bible study, and I start experiencing so many blessings from doing my personal study, I say, how, how much persons who have not had the opportunity to really understand the Bible in the way I'm understanding it, how would they feel if they get that opportunity? All right. So one time, my mind clicked. I thought about my in-laws. Mm -hmm. Hold on, hold on. Let me cut yes. you again. I want to tell you those, who have, you, those of you who are viewing, don't watch for yourself. Share the page with somebody because this, this information that is being shared here, this testimony, they are vital and you cannot accept that for yourself you need to let others be part of it right and those of you already involved in ministry you can write how you started your ministry to inspire others we will make reference to it all right continue brother yes so i went i i i asked them if they would like to have bible study they said yes i told them well i would come to you to the house and do bible study with you we we decided on a day so we used to meet every thursday uh, at 5 p.m., that's when we agreed. Well, now this is my family as well. So they have friends. And as a result of this class, we have a friend of my brother-in-law started attending the class as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Think it nice, man. Then you have my auntie-in-law next door st started attending the class. And it was going really well. We had some really fruitful discussions. Mm -hmm. um, I went so far as to other Bible studies straight from It Is Written. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are times we have discussions, there are times where I give them questions, and they enjoy. And that added flavor to the Bible study. Mm -hmm. Where they will have questions, they would have to look in the Bible, find the answers, and write down the answers to the questions. Mm -hmm. um, some of them I give them at the end of the class for the next class. And during yeah. the week before class starts, when they see me, they will run to me and give me the paper and show, finish. show it to me. And then... And when they see that they get everything correct, it's like they jump in for joy. Uh, and that was truly a motivation for me to continue that class. Okay. So, um, when it started, as I say, I was not very confident. And you didn't think you was qualified? I didn't think I was qualified. Mm -hmm. But God qua qualifies you along God the way. God qualifies the call. Yeah. He gave me ideas as to how to improve the class mm -hmm. and to add flavor to it. And so the students were really enjoying it and were being blessed at the same time. All right. Right? And this is very, this is very important. You see, he started with a little knowledge he got from a little exposure to the to the conference program. He decided, well, I, he's willing. So he went through and he was just giving out a little Bible study. Mm -hmm. And then the Spirit of God, and that's why I just shared the text. The Bible said that you should receive power after the Holy Ghost has come sure. upon you. Mm -hmm. So one of the main ways when you have to start ministry, the Holy Ghost must fill your life. So when you are doing it, you are doing it boldly, fearlessly, because God is with you. And that's why I want to make reference to Peter and John. They say they may not bold, but they may not ignorant. Yeah. But they were bold because they, they spent time with Jesus. Jesus filled them. Yeah. And as a result of that, they were able to do the ministry effectively. Yeah, exactly. All right? Okay. So, so we're moving on now. As we move on, I want to ask you another question. Do you think that there is a stereotype associated with who qualified to preach? We're talking about qualification, you know. <laughs> I think, do you think so? Brother Dali? 
Because we, we, we grew up together. Me and Danny, we, are, we, are, we went to school together. And um, in school, we never was in, into this church thing. Right? Mm -hmm. But when we came out of school, or in the late part of our school life, we, we get to know Jesus and so on and so forth. So do you think, as you, you join church and you get to know Jesus better and so on, do you think even now that there are some people who qualify and some who not qualify? Uh, let me say I used to think so mm -hmm. when I started attending church. And those of you who are viewing, you can share your comments as well. Eh? Do you think people qualify and some not qualify? Go ahead. Right. When I started attending church, I used to believe that, you know, these are the qualified ones. Mm -hmm. These are the ones. But as I, you know, continued on um, in the church life, that is, of course, being a Seventh-day Adventist, mm -hmm. I realized that, you know, uh, everyone has an opportunity to be used by God. Mm -hmm. And as we were talking about different ministries that individual has, you know, um, so I got to understand that uh, you're not, you know, qualified and I'm not. Mm -hmm. You know, the Holy Spirit uses everyone as he gives them um, spiritual gifts, right? But um, in some other churches or other places, you know, persons, uh, they only see one preacher or one teacher, you know, only one person is taking up the program. Uh, but I must say that that helped me a lot in the Seventh Adventist Church. As a youth growing up, I was able to, I was motivated as a speaker, you know, and I grew from that. You know, it groomed me to be a motivational speaker, someone who can counsel, someone who can help individuals. Okay, good. Right. Well, Shima, I wanted to read the question from Pastor Chad. <laughs> Sister Kisha, you said age, any age, any age. Any age can be involved in ministry. Mm -hmm. Please share how a three-year-old mm -hmm. or a four-year-old can be involved in ministry. Mm -hmm. Let me hear how you will respond. All right. So, <laughs> Zekisha, you want to help or you want to respond for yourself? I can go ahead. Ah, go ahead, ahead man. Now we're talking. All right, about. Pastor Charles. I wouldn't go far. I have a son and he's four years old. Amen. And I can tell you, he has been ministering, I guess, based on how we would have trained him and taught him. He would minister to his uncles and his cousins. He may tell them, for example, don't drink alcohol. Mm -hmm. Don't drink stag. Mm -hmm. Instead, drink a malt. And oh. even in that is witnessing. Oh, yes. I remember he even witnessed to his grand aunt and said, you should not eat pork. Mm -hmm. I was kind of taken back a little, you know. <laughs> but he was going on. He was, and he was just going. I'm, I'm like, okay. So I'm saying it's based on how you train trend. So you have to let them know right from wrong. And say things around them that is good so that they will be when they're sharing they don't have to question or think they know what is right because I am telling you I'm not saying they say right home he would say don't do this so when he see them I'm not telling him to tell them and he usually prays that they stop drink also amen amen so All yes right. pastor even at age three and four they All can right. witness so, so we, we need to say we need, we need not say any more on that hmm. as it relates to the family life as well you know, involve them in prayer. Right. Let them pray. You know, that way three-year-old, four-year-old can start praying by themselves. Yes. You know? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. And just to comment here, after the children's story at our church, the elder usually asks for a child to pray. And you will get three-year-olds and four-year-olds praying at our church at the end of the children's story at Divine Time. Yeah, I remember you had a, you had a church I used to attend. A little boy around that age, every time they go for children's story, you want to pray. And if he doesn't get a chance to pray, he cries for the rest <laughs> of the service. Right? <laughs> And, and um, somebody made a reference, John Mack was saying something there, John Mack said, um, when a child obey the parents, they are involved in ministry, right? True. They are showing they understand what God requires of them, and as a result of that, they are ministering, all right? So the, the, the question now, how can young people apply practically the Pathfinder law and pledge today, all right? And that's what he's speaking about, to go on God errand, right? To be a servant of God and a friend to man. How can they apply that? Young people, how can they apply that? I remember when I was much younger that that had kind of lucky like play in my mind. Mm -hmm. And I used to be walking the road and I just, yeah, some of the God. I, and then I understand it. I understand it. A servant of God doing what God wants you to do, mm -hmm. not doing your own thing. You know, I always have our own thing to do. We want to do all kind of things. But what does God want me to do? Mm -hmm. You understand? That is being a servant of God. And as you be a, as you you are a servant of God, automatically, you know, you'll be a servant, you'll be a friend to man. Okay. Because a friend 
would want good for you. Of course, of course. And God is good. Mm -hmm. And that's the best thing a friend could offer you. Mm -hmm. All right? To show you the way to God. Good. All right. But uh, I want you to read what Sister Melissa is saying to us there tonight. She, 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 I believe she is telling us a little about her ministry and how she started or something. So let's re read it for us. Let's yes, hear what, what she said. All right. After the head injury, I am now considered here as unqualified. But God has been using me in other places, starting at Snell Hall in Grenada to New Jersey in America. To persons who are rejected at their churches, do not be discouraged in your ministry. Mm -hmm. Keep praying and trusting in God, and He will direct your path. Yes. Jesus said in Luke, in Luke, Jesus said that it is true that a prophet is not accepted in his own hometown. <laughs> All right, and even though she has a head injury, she is still effective in the service of God. Amen. Amen. And and that's and and that's it. that's very powerful because once you make yourself available to God. God can still use you despite Amen. your weaknesses, all right? Sure. Brother. Mm -hmm. We as human beings, we could see the problem and not the solution. Mm -hmm. God sees, God can walk in, as we said earlier, in weak, the weakest of the weak and shows his power. No matter what, he's God. He is God. And if he chooses to use Sister Melissa, he's going to use her despite. Of her infirmity, her weaknesses. Sure. All right, and this is very important um, because, for example, when I when I just let me just give a little testimony to now everybody gets <laughs> something, right? When I just accepted Jesus, even before when you was making reference to you going to the hospital, when I started going to a crusade up in Ladig up there, mm -hmm. I was going in South Southern Farm, four going to Farm Five. I started. I my brother had a Bible. He used to go Mount Road. I took that Bible. That Bible become mine. And when I go to school. I started to witness. I haven't been baptized yet. Mm. I wasn't baptized yet, but I was just going and started to witness and witness and witness. And after eventually we were doing the same crusade, first baptism. Every night the pastor appealed in front force. Because I, my heart don't give to Jesus already. I got baptized. And after that, I think anybody had to tell me go and witness. I had a friend of mine. I could make reference to his name, Damien. Right? Um, he has a little impediment to this side. But he, you know he can move around. So we used to go up in a community. And what he used to do... He is more well known in that yard mm -hmm. than I am. So what he used to do, he just go to the neighbors and he start to talk to them about Bible. And when the discussion gets nice, I just take over and he go to our next house. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I remember a Sunday evening I was going up and they had Pat Fender meeting in Subi's church and Sister Lena she said, But Lambert, I want I think you should join the Pat Finder Club because the Pat Finder says going on God Aaron. Mm -hmm. And I was not Pathfinder, right. but I understood my purpose. And we used to do that ever so often. And as a result of that, a lot of the young guys in Subis got baptized and changed their lives and, and so on and so forth. So once the Spirit of God take control of your life, sure. that, that is the driving force in it. Yes. Mm -hmm. You don't care about what people say. I remember a time we went out and we was giving out tracts and so on, an invitation to a crusade. And we went down in a, in down, in, down in a side of the road, down in Postural up there. And somebody say, well, how are you brave? So I host that men stand up in the road drinking and all kind of thing. And we just come and I just bulge in. And I say, excuse, good afternoon. We are so, 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 so. And I started to talk. And then I realized that naturally I can't do that. Yeah, exactly. Right? But when the Spirit of God takes control of your life, nothing and nobody can stop you. You'll do things. And when you reflect on it, you say, well, how are you really doing that? It's not because of us, exactly. but because of the Spirit of God. All right? And that, that's very important. Our final question for tonight, and then we'll take some closing thoughts. Our final question for tonight. Do you know any Bible stories that show God can use ordinary people to do extraordinary mission for mm -hmm. Any Bible story you know of God using an ordinary person, somebody by the wayside? You know? Anybody? Well, what comes to my mind first, or who comes to my mind first, is that of Paul. Mm -hmm. You know, Paul was um, on mission for, you know, the, for Rome. Mm -hmm. You know, um, he was commissioned to go, you know, as a soldier for Rome. He was, you know, um, empowered by, you know, whoever commanded him. Mm -hmm. And he went and did what, you know, Rome. Um, but on his way to Damascus, the Bible tells us, um, Paul encountered Jesus. You know, mm -hmm. Jesus stopped him in his tracks, and Jesus uh, let him know who he was. And so Paul, in that great turning point, you know, from a soldier, someone who, 
you know, massacred Christians, as you would say, you mm -hmm. know, um, turned to saving lives, you know. So that that brings me that um, example there of Paul. Okay. But I, yes, is? I will give you a simple one. The woman of Samaria. Mm -hmm. The woman of Samaria mm -hmm. did not preach a sermon. She was not a Bible student. She was just there going to get some water. Mm -hmm. And she had an encounter with Jesus. Sure. And she told the whole neighborhood about that man she found. She pointed them to the master. And she was able to witness in a big way. So, to me, that's a simple post. Some, uh, somebody who would have also been seen as an outcast. Mm -hmm. Right? Based, based on the nation that she was part of. And then she used the opportunity when she met Jesus. She said, come see a man who tell me all that I am. She left her water pot in, her water pot, in fact, True. and ran. Mm -hmm. She didn't just walk or walk briskly. She ran. All right? And so too, when we meet Jesus, and the Holy Spirit arrests our heart, we may run without even realizing you know, I've had a, an experience where I saw someone who had a, mm -hmm. a problem walking. They got so emotional that day, they stood up and walked for a little while without recognizing that they walked. Mm -hmm. And after the emotion died down, they were unable to walk. Mm -hmm. So that, that woman of Samaria, she ran. I'm sure she didn't realize she was running. But there was something burning inside that she had to say it. And this is my Bible character. Okay, I, let, let's look at some of them. Um, Ricardo is saying, what, you, what is he saying, Nikisha? The training of the child, mm, yeah, this one there. The training of the child starts in the belly, right? As he was making reference to training your son. All right, Ricardo is saying some people you can think about who are simple is the 12 disciples. Um, Katisha is saying, what is he saying there? David, when he killed Goliath. Uh huh. All right. I so, clock. Uh huh. The woman at the well. Woman woman the well. Story. And John Max is saying the little girl who helped the king of leprosy, yes, Naaman. Yes. Right, man. Right. Okay. Um, okay. Let me read this one. It says, Cassandra. Uh, Cassandra is saying, I commend the panelists for inspiring me tonight. Great reminder that I need to avail myself more for God to use. He can use my weaknesses to do mighty things. May God continue to bless you and your ministry. Thank, Thank you, you, Sister Cassandra. Cassandra. Thank you very much. And this is very important there as I wait for um, you all to give your final. So this is very important because sometimes we think that I have to be this person or that person. And what, what does make our eyes blurry, I will say, is that when we look at another man's ministry sure. and we say, I cannot do that. So if I cannot do that, then I can't do anything. Sure. And I remember a friend of mine told me when I came to church and I started to preach and so on, you know, on fire, excited. He said, a sister who was in church for years, she came to him and she said, I can't allow Lambert and him to just get baptized and come in church and preach in an idea and I ain't doing anything. Hmm. So you inspired her. I inspired her, right? And yeah. many times it's like that. You, you know, you're watching other people and you're making them intimidate you. When, when you watch other people, it should fuel you and ask God, God, what you will have me to do? Yeah. He may not be preaching. Mm -hmm. He may not be singing. But maybe hospital visit. It may be Bible study, but you have to ask God what He wants you to do, and do it very effectively, right? Mm -hmm. So, Kisha, you know any Bible, any Bible persons? I was actually characters? thinking about David, but somebody has mentioned it, so I'll mention Aaron. Mm -hmm. He was just an ordinary man, and you may think he did nothing than hold up his brother's hand, Moses. But just by holding up the, his hand, they were winning the battle. And when his hand got tired and he was going down, they were losing, and he had told them. So you may think that your role is unimportant, unimportant or insignificant, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but your role, maybe, your role is very important. And each part of the body is very important in order to have success. So as Aaron, just holding up the prophet's hand, there is something that you can do. Amen, amen, amen. All right. Finally. I'm thinking about the man in the gatherings, the mm -hmm. demon possessed man. When Jesus came to him and healed him, mm -hmm. he wanted to follow Jesus. And Jesus said, No, go back to your community. Mm -hmm. Because remember, in that area, Jesus wasn't able to witness. Yeah. Because they didn't want him. Because when he cast the demons into the pigs, they, into the pigs, they, they told him to go. But this man witnessed his community. He was demon possessed. Now he bet Jesus he's in, he's in his right mind. So all the people before saw him 
when he was not he was demon possessed. Now later they would say, Look at this man. Remember who he was? That in itself is a testimony. Mm -hmm. And by that, I believe many people in that area got convicted and gave their heart to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Alright. I just want to share an inspiring poem. You know, I heard it in a Sabbath school some years back by Sister Shells. And I look for it on the internet today and I want to share it with the audience. Alright? After I share that poem. Then we'll have a press session and then we we'll close. Alright? Okay? A short press session. It all depends on whose hand it's in. Okay? If we keep what we have for ourselves, our ministry in our own possession, you wouldn't benefit. Right? Sure. But if we put it in God's hand, we will get benefit. Let me show you. A basketball in my hand is worth about $19. Are you talking about US? A basketball in Michael Jordan's hand is worth about $33 million. Sure. It depends on whose mm -hmm. hand it's in. Mm -hmm. A baseball in my hand is worth about $6. A baseball in Mark Maguire's hand is worth $19 million. It depends wow. on whose hand it's in. Mm -hmm. A tennis rocket is useless in my hands. A tennis rocket in Pete Sampras' hands in Webland Championship, it depends on whose hand it's in. Mm -hmm. right? A rod in my hand will keep away a wild animal. A rod in Moses' hand will part the mighty sea. It depends on whose hand it's in. Right? A slingshot in my hand is a kid's toy. A slingshot in David's hand is a mighty weapon. It depends on, on whose hand, hand it's in. Two fishes and five loaves of bread in my hand is a, is a couple of fish sandwiches. Two fishes and five loaves of bread in God's hand will feed thousands. It depends on, on whose hand it's in. in. Nails in my hand might produce a bald house. Nails in Christ's hand will produce salvation for the entire world. It depends on in whose, whose hand, hand it is. is. As you see now, it depends on whose hand it's in. So put your concern, your worries, your fears, your hopes, your dreams, your family relationship in God's hand. Because it depends on, on whose, whose hand, hand it is. is. Alright, we thank everyone for viewing tonight. And at this point, we want to pray for the entire viewing audience. And also for the ministry of of the of youth life all right so you know bow our heads and let us pray almighty god eternal father we come before you tonight in the name of jesus oh, yes, we give you thanks we give you praise we give you honor and we give you glory yes, we know that god that once we place our lives in your hands see you can do mighty things through so, us amen. we bless your name oh god we glorify your name we lift up the families that in problems oh god we pray that you will solve their problem. Be with that husband who might be abusing his wife, dear God. Be with that wife who may not be unfaithful to her husband. Be with the children, dear God, who might be disobedient to their parents. I pray, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that you will minister to those families. I pray, oh Father, for those who are sick, cancer is plaguing this world, dear God. Some diabetes and all different sicknesses, oh God, but we place them at your feet because we know that you are the great physician and there is nothing that this world have, no problem that is too big that heaven cannot solve. Sure. And I pray, oh God, for those who are viewing but have not yet accepted you, oh, I pray, that God, that the convicting power of your Holy Spirit will speak to their heart Amen. and eventually, dear God, they will cry out all to Jesus, I surrender. Oh, yes. And finally, dear God, those who haven't gotten involved in ministry they're just around warming benches and just enjoying the the prestige of being a christian i pray to god that they will understand that when you call us you didn't call us dear god to be spectators but you call us to be participants in the winning of souls so god continue to inspire them inspire us bless us dear god bless the youth life ministry oh, yes. bless the greater conference dear god bless yes. all those who are viewing around the world and we pray to God that when you come, all of us will be saved. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercy. Oh, yes. And we pray to God that you will answer your, our prayer according to your will. In Jesus' name, I let everyone say Amen. 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 All right, God bless you. And looking forward to see you next week as we continue with Youth Life Unplugged. God bless you. Good night. Our school family is growing. And we are very excited. Persons from all over are tuning in to study with us. To keep this ministry alive, we need your help. Like, comment, and share the daily lessons so they could reach those who need them the most. Furthermore, if you have any questions, you could ask them in the comment sections. Send us a private message or even email us.
and we will prepare a video response with the answers to your questions. We look forward to hearing from you. Don't forget to like, comment, and share. Thank you. 